I'm Noah Friedman-Rudovsky. I'm a photojournalist who's been based in Bolivia for the last eight years. Um, and we've been working on a project documenting the pollution and environmental destruction of the Lake Titicaca and its impact on community, indigenous communities around the lake. My name is Sarah Shariari and I'm a freelance journalist based in La Paz, Bolivia for about the past three years. We were looking at contamination of Lake Titicaca and population migration from the countryside primarily to the city of El Alto, which in the year 2000 was home to about 500,000 people and we expect that in this year's census there will be more than a million people uh, living in this city. So as the population grows rapidly, the infrastructure does not keep up with the population and that means you have a lot of problems with solid waste disposal, sewage, and that causes problems for the population not only here in El Alto but the people who live downstream. When we were reporting this story, we covered the entire trajectory of water from the glaciers outside or above the city of El Alto through the city of El Alto, tracing along the rivers that lead toward the lake. And then we went to several places along the lake shore looking for different ways people were being affected by pollution. For the people in El Alto, it's a health risk not to have a home or a business that's connected to a sewer or to live near a river like the riverbed that we're in now, which is the bed of the Rio Seco, which is filled with trash, dead dogs. It's an open air bathroom. It's filled with feces. And it's a health risk because many people have to use this river as their bathroom. They have no other option. I've lived half an hour from El Alto for years. And I never, and have gone to Lake Titicaca on various occasions. And I had never known about a big pollution problem. People don't seem to talk about it much. And so I was surprised, first of all, to hear that there was one. And then I think my initial impression was that it was something of concern to environmentalists and to experts, but that probably people's lives weren't all that affected by it and that they are concerned more with kind of their daily needs. But we found in going, visiting with communities and even people in the city of El Alto that the pollution has really changed their lives in the past few years. And so it was striking that that's happening right next to where I'm living and that we haven't heard much about it and I don't think that most of the urban population hears much about that. So in general one of the main challenges of working as a photographer in Bolivia is that people are fairly reserved and don't want their photo taken in a lot of regions. Um, and so we had to go back to the same town a good three or four times before we could kind of get people's trust and, and get them both to speak about their problems and to let us photograph their daily lives. I think one of the most surprising things was how willing people who live in El Alto and along the rivers that lead to the lake and the lake were to talk about the problems that they face because it can be difficult working in the Altiplano. People tend to be reserved and they don't want to talk with outsiders, which is completely understandable. But we just met a lot of people who were incredibly open to sharing their thoughts and even parts of their lives with us. We met a fisherman outside the city of Puno in Peru who took us fishing with him, took us to meet his family, talked with us about the changes that he's seen in the lake. So I found that people around the lake were genuinely aware of what was happening and wanted to let people know about it.